Hey, it's D. It's a brand new episode coming right for you, right on the FTO Network. Enjoy. Hey, how we doing, everybody? I'm going to have to hold my phone the entire time because... Because of reasons, let's put it that way. Because of reasons. Like, I, I can't set it up on my tripod because that's... I got to charge my device. But I'm hanging out with Ronan, so, you know, got to pick your battles, I guess. If you guys are paying attention to the verses right now, it's, uh, it's getting pretty fun. It's getting pretty fun. Really? What's up, Ronan? How we doing, man? What's up, bro? I'm good. I'm drawing a, a, a landscape right now. Oh, you you do like the the pad, like the drawing pad? You do those things? Yes, my iPad. It's cracked to death, but it is here. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like you just injured your foot, Bradison, man. Oh, yeah. So I took a uh, five-month break from using a katana because I was But he wasn't showing me how to condition my body. So even though I was, like, practicing all these kung fu and being told I was really good and stuff and being able to, like, fight and stuff, my conditioning okay. wasn't that good. So I'd be gassing out a lot and my muscles, like, I wasn't, I wasn't strong enough to, like, do certain flips or whatever. And so um, I felt that I wasn't getting the conditioning that I wanted from my, my master. So I, there's this other teacher that I was brought to. One of his students found me through Instagram. And so I went to, uh, went to him, ended up sword fighting him. And after the sword fight, he was like, yeah. So uh, he, I, I came to him to learn conditioning. And then after, after we had a sword fight, he was like, you, you know a whole bunch of stuff, but you're a collector right now. And until you stop collecting martial arts, your progress will be halted. So after that, I found this other teacher. And this teacher understood conditioning, but he also understood like the wushu stuff, which is like the kung fu stuff that looks really cool. Wushu is like what Jet Li does. And so I started learning from him and um, he showed me that like, if you focus on, on one art form and practice it diligently, you'll get really good. And that's what happened. I started getting stronger and more flexible and having more of an understanding of like what Kung Fu actually is. But because of that, I felt that it was counterproductive to practice anything outside of Kung Fu. So all I did was practice like forms and all the weapons associated with kung fu so then uh when i came back from traveling i was getting really tired and i was like in before when i was practicing with my sword i wasn't so i thought that perhaps like training with the sword would give me my energy back and so uh after a couple months of like being indecisive today i decided you know what i'm gonna go and pick up my sword again and <laughs> the, the first combination i decided to do with the sword I, uh, it's, it's not a sharp sword. It's made of aluminum. It's really dull. It's like con safe. I've been taking it to conventions and stuff. But because of the speed and ferocity at which I swing this sword, when I did the combination, I hit my ankle and my ankle bled profusely. So now we are <laughs> bleeding. But uh, well, my ankle is, it's, 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 it's like fried chicken. I mean, chopped chip chicken right now. So you have to give it a couple yeah, of days I thought, to I thought some white, some white meat <laughs> on your leg, man. Yeah. I've had those days. I've never been much like into weapon training. I've always been more of a hand to hand combat kind of guy, uh, like a like American Street Fighter kind of kind of dude. I know, like I've, I've watched some of your stories, some of your your lives. I'm like, uh, you told me once you went to a bar or a pool hall and you tried to break some dude's arm. Were you telling me about like talking about that story in one of your one of your videos? Good God, I have I've not been to a bar or a pool hall. I was uh, training with some underground kickboxers. Oh, and that's what it was. Yeah, and I was sparring one of the kickboxers, and I'm, I'm, I'm not a large person at all. So, like, when people get in range of me being able to hit them, I know that me hitting them isn't going to do much. So as soon as I was in range to grab homie, I grabbed him and I put him in, like, an arm lock with, like, his ah. arm Because, like, that's the only th I can't just punch people into oblivion. I'm not really built to do that. And so I, um, I had him by the arm and I couldn't break it because it was sparring. So I kind of just like sat there for a second and was like, huh, there's not much that I can do here. Is there like any 
any fighters or any like you know fictional fighter that you you take i don't know like some inspiration from like uh whenever i i see about like fighters who are small or you know amateur fighters that are small i think about characters like aladdin you know mm -hmm. like uh like they're they're very they're very smart a little whimsy when it comes to certain things but like they're not like the best hand-to-hand -hand fighters like do you think about any kind of characters when you uh when you're when you're training or when you're learning something new because like what you told me before about uh taking in one type of fighting and then move on to the next one. That's what Batman did. Batman did. He, he went like from one teacher, learned all he could from that teacher and bounced on to the next person. Sounds like that's what you're doing right now. Yeah. Uh, Aang is probably number one just because like that fight that he has in the schoolyard where homie's trying to get with him, but he can't get with him because Aang is, Aang, is, Aang is too good in his techniques. And so Hon Aang figured out how to, like, make this man throw himself <laughs> without touching him. That is the dream. The dream is to be able to beat somebody without touching them and be completely at peace the entire time. I feel that. You got, like, a, a pacifist kind of mindset to you, too, don't you? <laughs> Not at all. No? <laughs> well, sight philosophically, yes. But practically, no. I, uh, it's weird. I don't. I feel so like with Street Fighter, how you have like Ryu and then you have evil Ryu. Mm -hmm. I don't want to allow the 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 darkness to take over. And so in an attempt to not be taken over by the darkness, I try to employ the light as much as I can. But what I'm struggling with right now and what my teacher is trying to show me is how to integrate the darkness into into your training so that uh, you don't suppress the darkness. Because you can't suppress the darkness and beat it's it. who you like, are, yeah. Exactly. And that's what makes the matter tricky. Yeah. You got to yeah. embrace that shit. It's easy. Like, it's, hard, it's hard when you're younger. Because, like, you know, like, your heart pumps a lot faster. Like, you get feel your feelings a lot, a lot more intense. When you get older, like, uh, it starts to subside a bit. But uh, you'll get there, man. You got, like, <laughs> somebody asking your question. Like, uh, when's your... When's your movie coming out? Movie? Yeah, I'm not sure if you're talking to you or me. I, I don't have a movie coming out, but I, I figured you may have a movie coming out. You you choreograph some people. Uh, snap. I don't know. There's there's a lot of stuff that could come out. We get to choreograph a lot of stuff. If it's Power Rangers, Power Rangers will probably come out sometimes this sometime this year. If it's... Uh, the uh the the fraternity of martial artists movie that comes out on the 18th i think the premiere is in florida it's not my movie but members of my team are affiliated with it specifically running fist ronin if it's um the uh what else would there be and then sometimes i like help people out with stuff like there's a dude that i'm helping out with a project that'll be coming out next year and my personal projects those are on the back burner because I have like I want to do like a Caribbean version of Ong Bak. Like I want to have like action sequences that are like Ong Bak, but based more in the Caribbean with That's like good, machete man. fencing. Yes, because there's so much like there's so yeah. many arts like there's an art called Kalinda from Trinidad where they like do like short range stick fighting. And then they have Fide Machete, which is from uh, Haiti. And they have uh, the 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 thing, not the Moors. They're not called the Moors, the Maroons in Jamaica uh, fought with machetes and, pis and, and muskets. And they, uh, they got a peace treaty with the British government in like the 1804 or in the 1800s uh, based on their ability to fight so well and protect their place. And now uh, companies have come in and the companies have started mining bauxite. Bauxite is the, uh, the mineral that is used to make aluminum. And they've actually gone into the territory of the Moors and started mining bauxite in their territory. And it's been really bad for their community and for their environment. So the Moors have been uh, having to learn new ways to fight against uh, colonialism and corruption in their country in order to make sure that their people are safe. Hmm. Done a lot of research in this, it sounds like. Yeah, because I, I, uh, I like history and I like uh, seeing patterns repeat themselves in history as well. And so, like in in Haiti, like eighteen o four, that's when they like got their uh, got their freedom. However, when they got their freedom, the French government was like, "Hey, fam, here's all of the money that you owe us from destroying all of our fleets and stuff. If you don't pay this, we're gonna come over with all of our people and destroy you. So you're in debt now." 
And they also blocked off Haiti from being able to trade internationally. And then with like mental slavery and stuff, a lot of people have been conditioned to want to live like the people in the West live. So although they have their freedom and although they're self-sustainable, they or they're they're uh, they've been tricked kind of into uh, having a, a Western ideal um, in the things that they want. And a lot of us, a lot of people in the Caribbean and a lot of people in Latin America and elsewhere around the world have been tricked into like uh, feeding into this Eurocentric ideal when they're after they get their freedom or when they're in search of their freedom. So instead of being uh, grateful for the way that they've been living for thousands of years, they'll want to assimilate to like being industrialized. Meanwhile, the industrial, uh, the industrial people, once they get to a certain level of comfort, those industrial people decide they want to connect to the earth and become rooted and start doing yoga, yoga and reading, uh, uh, wearing handmade clothes. And it's, it's very backwards. No, I get that. Yeah, I, I, def I definitely get that part. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the, the, so I, I saw you do like the the fight choreography for uh, a cosplayer who's in a Kim Possible. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a Kim Possible. I posted a while back. I forget who the cosplayer was, but I saw you do that, that chore choreography. And you said you want to do like this Ang Bak uh, Caribbean Islander type uh, type film. Like, uh, you, you mentioned all these different types of martial arts. Like, how, how would that work in a film? Easy. I mean, you know martial arts when, so, like, when we choreograph something, because, like, the Kim Possible fight was Monia and Shaibu, who's you don't even cosplay, and then the Caribbean Geisha. And Caribbean Geisha is from uh, the island of Antigua, and some of our family members are from St. Thomas, which are, like, usually U.S. version islands and stuff. And so um, when you know martial arts, you come up to the martial arts, and you're like, all right, so if I throw this punch, what would you do? And then based on what you do, what would I do? Because you know martial arts, you're incorporating the moves that you want to do in the fight. So it's, it's like prof more so like professional wrestling where you're flowing with the movements of the other person in order to build the choreography. And there are specific points that are like highly choreographed so that you can uh, get those knocked out. But like oftentimes when we're doing stuff, we'll mess up the choreography. But because we already know martial arts, when somebody throws a hook instead of an uppercut, we'll parry the uppercut and go into something. And from there, we, we can build up even cooler choreography. So in terms of making action set pieces, more of looking at the environment or looking at the story that you want to tell and then building the choreography around the story that you want to tell. It's not really a challenge. The hardest part of like uh, making something like that would be what the story is. Because with a lot of action movies, you need a reason for people to fight. And if you want a martial arts movie, you need a reason for people to fight with their hands and why the audience should care. Hmm. It sounds like you, you take a lot of stock into uh, to martial arts films and what happens behind the scenes too. Uh, yeah, that's that's how you learn stuff. Cause like nobody's like in war, nobody's fighting like hand to hand, and in the cage, nobody's really using kung fu. Cause like either you'll kill somebody very quickly. Like it it wouldn't be entertaining if people were using like super high level martial arts inside of the cage. So you have to balance, like even with like Muay Thai stuff, you can't, uh, it's illegal in Muay Thai. Well, yeah, it's unadvised in Muay Thai to kick people's knees, like their kneecaps. And it's also unadvised to like stump on people's feet or to like, uh, to grab people and like elbow their joints. Cause those are like fatal moves. So, and even like with kicking the knees, you'll over time deteriorate their uh, their joints. And then yeah, that's not good for anybody. It's not entertaining. So like when your fight scenes are like the only way that you can show the efficacy of martial arts and also show the beauty of martial arts. And so like Jackie Chan, he brought, uh, well, from the beginning. So the, the, the Shaw brothers brought like the hanga and doing like the um, showing how forms and the training are applied in Kung Fu. And then Bruce Lee brought like the real speed of combat into martial arts movies. Then Jet Li brought like the grace of Mushu while also bringing the, uh, the efficacy of Kung, of Kung Fu and the, the performance of like stage shows where they have like wires and stuff. So when you have all those things combined together, you get to like the raid where you get the speed of Bruce Lee, but the ferocity of like Jackie Chan and the ingenuity of Jackie Chan with certain set pieces that you get in the raid or certain stunts. Like there's a scene in the raid where this dude kicks down a door, so has a broken piece of the door, and then homie grabs homie's head and he like falls to the ground while holding the head of the dude so that his neck goes down onto the broken piece of door and it stabs homie in the neck. That's like oh. genius. I remember that. Like I was just, uh, I was debating on watching the raid today after I just finished uh, the Forever Purge. So, 
<laughs> like, uh, and like, I, f- I feel like that type of movie scene would be like more what, uh, from what I've seen in your stories and things that you're pulling, I feel like the raid would be more of your alley. Like, looking at your story, seeing like the stuff you post from Kung Fu Rob, like, uh, like that would be more in your wheelhouse. Like, some of these, some like, uh, level, level wise Kung Fu movies. So, like, you know, uh, Jean Claude Van Damme, The Quest. Like wall fighters come together in tournament base. I feel like more of a like a catch them all in different levels would be a more of your wheelhouse. Like uh, is that like in your in your future too to do like a like a the game Bruce Lee style type film in the future? That might be something to to do. Uh, I haven't. In well, yes, the the pattern that has revealed itself most would be like that more level-based system where there are people that specialize in certain weapons or certain arts, and those are the people that you end up going against. Like, I haven't Mm -hmm. seen a lot of Western action movies just because the Asian movies are right there, and I've been watching them for so long, and the quality, like, there's there's a distinct difference in quality between the Eastern and Western action movies. But the Jean-Claude Van Damme film that I actually do really like that my dad got uh, got to indoctrinate me with before I was too old was uh, Bloodsport. And I oh, yeah. love the way that they approach the tournament in Bloodsport because, like, I, Enter the Dragon is one of my favorite movies ever. And I didn't realize how much stuff I forgot was in it until I watched it again uh, this year. And as a tournament, Enter the Dragon was way better. I mean, Bloodsport was way better than Enter the Dragon because you got to see who the people in the tournament were and why they were doing what they were doing. Yeah, I get that, yeah. Yeah. Like they, they, you got to see like like more like the, the rationale behind like what like the story was a little bit more rich and blood. Exactly. Story. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Like I think like uh, the Enter the Dragon was more like more fun and entertaining all around, but like blood sport, like you got like you got into the fighters, like you really got like to dig deep into those fighters in blood sport. It, de- it definitely like, like the favorite of the two is blood sport over Into the Dragon, but I respect the hell out of Into the Dragon. So no, I feel yeah. Like- and Enter the Dragon was one of those movies where people were still figuring things out and they were mm-hmm. still figuring out like how they, you also had a lot of people who had no, or didn't have a firm standard of uh, action, like how they wanted the movie to look and how they wanted to portray themselves. So everybody in the movie moves differently according to what they've been taught. Whereas now there's like a standard of, of stunt fighting. And even in America, there's been like a standard of the way that stunt people fight. And so when, uh, when martial artists from other places come into the West, they have to learn the way that Western stunt people fight because it keeps everybody safe. Whereas like in China, in Indonesia, Thailand, they don't care. They have their <laughs> formula. And if you get hurt, you go to heal. <laughs> you get back to our set. I, I, I will say that uh, Chinese Connection was probably like my go-to standard for all martial arts film like the Chinese connection that that was the movie that set the template for a lot of these films out there in my eyes it is because it's when the story and the arts came together and the way that like I think Bruce Lee having studied so much he was able to finally put the pieces together on that one because he was given the freedom to right and much like yourself like he was big in the film too like he was a big film buff and like and study like how western films and and Chinese films like presented themselves not only like in action, but also in drama and other types of genres. Like you want to put all of that into a movie. And that's kind of like how the Chinese Connection got started. That's why he's the best. Because he was able to take things from everything and put it into something that worked. I'm with you. I'm with you, Famicom. Like the, the, I, I, I don't know if I would say like, like the, the original soundtrack was like the biggest flaw. But it, <laughs> I think it's dated now. I think like when we watch it then... It was epic, but we we look at it now, like you know, forty some years later, it has like that cheesy feel attached to it. But you know, like you gotta you gotta take a lot of those things with a grain of salt. <laughs> the soundtrack to what? Enter the Dragon. Uh not a soundtrack to Enter the Dragon. It was topical. It was topically <laughs> perfect. Everybody want to wear eighties clothes and watch Stranger Things. They don't want to listen to eighties music. Shame on it. <laughs> I agree with that, and I can't even say anything you're saying. Uh, I watched like the first six episodes. I couldn't really get into it. Like this is this, this is not the show for me, for sure. <laughs> and to, to those who love it, like you know, more power to you. But I I can't I can't get on board. 
we all have our things. I prefer the 70s to the 80s. Like, but the thing that sucks is that, like, people are still figuring things out in the 70s. So I can't really watch that many shows from the 70s. But I, I appreciate, like, I like the aesthetics of the 70s a lot. And, like, there's a show called The Get Down. And I love The Get Down. And any show that, like, takes place in the 70s or movie that takes place in the 70s, but it's made with the lessons that we've learned since then, I like way more. Because I tried to sit through uh tried to sit through the map, couldn't do it. Get Christy Love, also couldn't do it. Cleo Factor Jones, still couldn't do it. It's like, dang, what about I Shaft? uncultured. What about what about Shaft? Like that was that was pure seventies black force. I like Shaft. Shaft goes hard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. There, there's there's some stuff from the seventies that, that that gives a good pass. But the the get down, that was the roller skate movie, right? On Netflix? The roller skate show? The on Get Down was the one. It was the disco one with like the beginnings of hip hop right. and the DJs and stuff. Bro. Oh, it's good. I I I haven't taken part in it. Usually when like when it was an all kid cast, like I I zone out. Like no no shade. It's just like uh when when it's a when it's a full kid cast, like unless I'm I'm a kid watching it. Like I can't get into it. Like uh, that was it was my bread and butter when I was like in my youth Disney Channel and Nickelodeon. That was my go to. All that, uh, Space Witch Mountain, uh, all that stuff. I was into it, but like as I got older, like I couldn't keep watching it. I think that's why Stranger Things doesn't doesn't click with me like it does with some folks. But uh, well, that's you, you understandable. Give, if you give it the stamp of approval, I'll always like I'll take part. I get my twelve year old to watch it, watch it with her, see if she likes it. <laughs> The get down is definitely not for children. Oh no! It's People not? be getting shot. There are drugs. New York. Right. Gets, there's fires. There is the gangs in New York with the Puerto Ricans that be dressed like Native Americans with leather jackets, busting people in the head with baseball bats. Like the get like down the is a serious show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is that was that like a, a go to film for you also? Like some like the war. Like uh, seeing like American Street Fighter, like like do you like uh, American fighting movies? I actually like the Warriors for the plot and the story. The story structure of the Warriors was really tight because like it's uh, you know what's like it's it's the thing that I've liked about studying modern movies and studying classic movies is modern movies are based off of subversion. So they say, you think this thing is going to happen, but this is actually going to happen. The bad guy is the good guy. And the good guy is the bad guy, like in freaking Frozen. And bad guys have feelings, and good guys are all faking it for the camera. Whereas, like, classic movies, these are actual, the, the conventions haven't been broken yet. So having been tricked into expecting subversion, I don't expect the expected thing. Like, I don't think the dude is going to get the girl. So when the dude gets the girl, I'm like, oh, my gosh, the dude got the girl. Because in modern movies, like, the dude is going for the girl, and the perfect girl doesn't want him. And then all this, like, this ratty, like, beaten up girl that, that has been there the entire time ends up being the main love interest in, like, modern <laughs> movies. But old movies, it's like, the blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl that Maverick wants is the one that Maverick ends up with. And I was like, what? Because I saw Top Gun for the first time a couple weeks ago. I was like, what? <laughs> that actually worked? Hilarious. So you must, you must love The Good Place, and The Good Place must have been, like, a, a, a nice show for you. I've never seen The Good Place. Older teams, it, 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 the good place has like like that that submersion you were talking about, like where where up is up is down, left is right, uh, white is black. It has like that that kind of feel to it. Yeah, if you get a chance, I definitely I definitely take a look. There's 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 no fighting inside of it, but it's, it's a lot of uh, a lot of mind fuckery, I guess I should say. A lot of that inside I of it. Yeah. I enjoyed having my mind blown watching Lucifer, and it's weird because I'm like yeah. I'm very Christian. But I enjoyed watching that show greatly. It's a great show. It's, it's very accurate to the Bible at times, too, yeah. Yeah, the way that they tackled, like, Christian mythology was really tight. Because, like, mm -hmm. Catholicism historically blended a lot of stuff from, um, from like, the Roman and Greek tradition In Greek, yeah. into the canon of Christianity. And so it gave us this interesting dichotomy or this, this interesting perspective of, the characters from the Bible and they expounded on like the, the canon of those characters from the Bible in a really cool way. And so yeah. like Lucifer kind of plays with like, but because a lot of the people that, uh, that worked for Vertigo comic books were like of a Catholic origin, especially like Vertigo is like mostly British invasion people like um, Alan Moore and Grant Morrison 
and uh, Neil, Neil Gaiman, the creator. Neil of Gaiman, man. that's the Sandman, yeah. dude. Yes, and yeah. so you get to see like the uh, you get to see that influence of Catholicism on them, and even like Daredevil, same thing, and being raised like non-denominational and Baptist, and being raised like Orthodox Christian. It's always cool to see like how the Christ uh, the the Catholics interpreted Christianity, and more importantly, how like the the influence of catholicism affects like creators that have come out of that catholicism but still have like that 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 uh cultural root in their creation i, I will say that when it comes to when it comes to daredevil like frank miller focused more on, on the guilt of being a catholic as opposed like say like the actual religion itself he focused more like on how that guilt can bring you down how that guilt can shape you who you are how like the idea of good can like make you do certain things and take things into your hands. What's up, Memphis Jasmine? How's it going? And uh, it, it really, it really changed like uh, you know that character through his religion, as opposed like how we see Lucifer or shows like Supernatural by Eric Kripke. Like you know, he also much like Lucifer put a lot of uh, a lot of canon from like the you know pagan Greek uh, Catholicism. Like that, he put a lot of that that ism inside these stories and like if it's it's fact to base from like the the lore that we we've all heard of agreed and that's what that perception of of catholicism and the the experience of guilt is what i loved about season three of daredevil was they really went into that deep like on the netflix daredevil and how yeah. it affected him it does it it's I like the fact that they they rip it from like the like the the, the guilt or the story that most uh, Catholics go through, but it also like took from the comic also, and it really put not just like the character Daredevil, but like his friends also on that spotlight of like their guilt and their struggle with uh, being a party to like the Daredevil fight and saving Hell's Kitchen. Like it it really put like a spotlight on a lot of different uh, like substance abuse on on lying on like keeping secrets like it just it, it sounds trivial me saying it out loud but, like it, they really made it shine on that season three like i really agree with you on that yeah it's rare that we get to see things of that nature come full circle especially mm -hmm. with having a lot of shows being uh, left to one season because a lot of a lot of uh networks want as much content as possible mm -hmm. as much diverse content as possible which and, and so we don't often get to see a story get told over three seasons anymore. I think the things that go viral are a notable exception. And I think Daredevil Devil had the most out of all, the most seasons out of all of the MCU shows that we got to see. I do think that's why, like out of all the shows that we've heard coming to Disney Plus from the 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 Marvel Marvel uh, Netflix uh, slew of shows, that Daredevil was the first one. Not just because like, it was the first show. To be put on uh, Netflix, but since like it just it sticks out the most. That's why like you saw Matt Murdock in the Spider Man film, like it's for that same reason. Yeah, it tells story that's also in the way that they because it scared me for a second with what they were gonna do with Daredevil because Daredevil it was like until Frank Miller came around, he was linked to Spider Man. Well, yeah, Daredevil has always been really linked to Spider Man like in terms of his villains and stuff, because he didn't really have a lot of his villains of his own. So then when Frank Miller came around and did like the whole hand and Electra thing, and then people built on top of that, with like, like yeah. uh, Joe, Joe Quesada and Kevin Smith, Guardian Devil is what got me into reading Daredevil. And I skipped, I still haven't read any of Frank Miller's Daredevil, but like the, the way that they go into it with like from Bendis to like all the way up until like the latest dude that, uh, that did Daredevil. Where it's where the the lines are more simple and stuff. The way that they handled that character from what like the the foundation that was established by um, Miller and then what Bendis put on top of that and the other one he put on top of it. Daredevil as a character is always really interesting to me because he suffers a lot of yeah. his own volition. It's real. It's really real because like we we go through that. I just went through like not being able to go to Awesome Con like with seeing the mass shootings in all the different places. There's another one in Philadelphia I just saw before I got on with you. Uh, with like with the the abortion laws, with like all the other things that are going like like I feel that guilt, I feel that shame, that sorrow that we're all going through. Like it, it hits me pretty hard too. And comfy, comfy, cozy, like it is a strong standing. Like I I agree with you on that also. Like but the that guilt is real, it's raw, and like uh, the way they translate it, not just from the comic books, but also into the TV show. Like it's 
it's something to take work of. Like, uh, I, I think that that's probably like what you're really getting at too. Like, it's something like to to take notice of, like the the rawness of that guilt we keep seeing in this character. Yeah, because it's not it's it's heavy, but it's not depressing. And I yeah. feel like it takes a really good storyteller to be able to tell like a heavy story that isn't depressing. Because for me, like Punish, I couldn't get through Punisher because it was just it looked dark and the story was dark and it was slow. And I'm sure there's people that love the Punisher, but like, yeah. I couldn't sit through it. Whereas like with Daredevil, there's a show called Psych. Somebody dies in every episode of Psych, but it's hilarious. hilarious and yeah. there's enough hope in it to keep me watching it every time. Lucifer, same thing. People would die constantly in Lucifer, but there's levity in it. I tried to watch Hannibal, couldn't make it through Hannibal. But Dexter, Dexter is amazing because they balance the levity with the heft of the stories that they tell in it. Is is that is that like like how you have to perceive death? Like you personally, like is like with a bit of uh, a whimsy or with a bit of like blase attached to death? Like is that how how like you have to approach death or like can it can it not be too serious for you? I think there I think it's like comfy uh, agrees with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think of death contextually. So like um it's when people that I care about experience death, it's hard to be emotionally disattached. So I think when when there is death where people are connected to it, I think it's important to like respect it and give it its time to be processed, which is what I love about American gods. Like a lot of American gods is people taking the time to process the things in their lives that don't make sense. And either accepting that that thing is never going to make sense or learning how to constitute themselves in a manner where they can understand how things are working. Because like homie in American Gods, he keeps, he, he realizes how behind he is yeah. and how the world is coming out. And eventually he just gives up and he's like, okay, I'm never going to understand this. So instead I'm going to operate from a place so that I can operate in this world that doesn't make any sense to me. And only then does he unlock the the power that he's had this entire time which is what i like really 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 liked about that show um yeah. and that whole story although it goes completely off the rails after that well like you know the writing team completely like that's a whole that's a whole different conversation that involves Orlando jones like that uh i i can't keep on getting into because i stopped watching it after season mm -hmm. two and uh the, the racism was real on that on that show around season three, which is like so ironic because that show was really grounded in race and racism and like, the oppression of black people, and uh, like the to see that character shadow like to as you as you say like to reboot himself in that show, mm. like uh, like through through the death, through the sorrow, through the hardship, through like like the 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 suppression of life on himself and his loved ones, like you know. Like to see that that really like nexus of him break through when he finally like, did like accept who he was and who he is like and then like to have whatever happened in season three happen like I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't do it it pissed me off too much I couldn't I couldn't be a part of that. Yeah, it's hard looking at the way that Hollywood treats creators of color because they want they they, they we 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 call for rep or culturally. There is a call for representation, mm -hmm. yeah. but there is also a censorship in that representation at the same level. Well, no, 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 same yeah. level. You're going to go so far. Hey, slow, slow down, everybody. Like, you're going to go so black. You're going to go so black. Easy does it. Yeah, that's the problem. It's what's been a constant battle identity wise the last couple of years, even like getting into martial arts and then starting to learn Japanese and then studying Japanese history and culture and realizing, dang, I don't really want to learn Japanese. I just like samurai swords and anime. Because <laughs> the, I've learned the culturally. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a whole thing. Cause like I studied, there's a YouTube it. channel called the black experience Japan. And in that YouTube video the series is all about black people and their experiences, like living in Japan and coming there. Was, and the story of a lot of positive. Yeah. <clears throat> which is crazy and so like what i've learned is with when it comes to culture the aesthetics of culture is what, like the main export that uh that that cultures bring around the world is aesthetics and what people are selling the the people are selling the aesthetics of their culture yeah. when the ideals of their culture more so than their culture itself so like accepting or uh holistically accepting a culture isn't the isn't 
the the pursuit for a lot of people nor really should it be because if you don't if you're not raised in a culture what you might have to do to understand it isn't necessary like i'm caribbean but like I, there's being caribbean but not being raised caribbean i like took some time to like learn about certain things but because i wasn't raised in that culture i can never truly uh understand or not even understand i can never truly accept as its own separate thing certain things that are done culturally like for example like the way that people dance is like really provocative and so like i'm culturally it's not that provocative it's just dancing but being like an american you see certain things and you're like hey i can't just run around this room humping people that's freaking weird but culturally over there it's okay so there's like different things that different people do but like i can i can the the aesthetics of like palm trees and the cool music that people have and like the cool culture people have and the slang that people have those are like exports that have been uh been transported over time through uh through through music and through media and so as as people that export culture especially like uh black culture or culture of the diaspora it's important for us to know where the power in our aesthetics are and how to translate them for other people if we want to make sure that we have control over that uh that culture being exported I mean, you just you just said a lot of stuff and I'm, I'm gonna see if i can process it and regurgitate it back to you like if, so i understand it completely uh essentially what you're saying is that uh, you're a bit foreign like to the caribbean culture because like you are like american outside looking in even though like you were raised around people who have adopted that culture much like much like superman in a way these are two two major characters like uh, i see some comparison of you in that uh that i find as hallmarks to myself and the way i see myself in life uh because superman himself is also like you know kryptonian as all of us know but raised you know an earthling american and you know he only sees like the the culture of krypton outside looking in he doesn't see himself as a true kryptonian uh, not that you don't see yourself as a true Caribbean. It just you you have like an outside perspective of this world that like you're not really a part of, and like you may or may not ever see yourself truly a part of, but you will forever accept it. If if I'm getting that correct. Yeah, you're right. That's heavy, heavy as the crown. Like uh, Comfy said, also like you know, uh, like we see all this stuff in the world, or like you know, taking in all this culture. It's like you have to take some breaks sometimes and just like you know, process it and try to find out who you are as adjacent to this and to like, you know, your actual upbringing. It's, it's, it's a hard battle because I don't know my lineage. Like, I don't know where my blackness comes from. I have no clue. I thought about doing some DNA tests. Like, I haven't really like pulled a trigger on that. Maybe I don't want to know. Maybe if I find out, uh, it just, it won't feel like me. But, uh, it's a it's a hard bag, like uh, even knowing where you come from, but not being able to fit in with that culture that you're a part of. Because it's also what you said before. It sounds like uh, you said like most cultures want people to and like uh, excuse like this this verbiage, but culture vote or appropriate their culture for the sake of profit and finance. But uh, it seems like you know cultures like ours, like Black Americans are some of the few people who do have problems with people appropriating their culture for the sake of finances. It's, it's, it's like, it's a, it's a mixed bag when you see other cultures out there, like just like putting their culture out there for people to regurgitate and put back in front of them for the sake of profit. It's, it's interesting. Like, you know, yeah. I, can't, I, can't, I can't forsake it, but it's interesting. Yeah, the thing about black culture african-american culture that makes it different is that we can't be paid off of we we are not because there's there's so many things that have happened with us culturally we can't be paid from our cultural influence because there's too many of us and there's too much overlap in blackness as a blackness is inconsistent because there's so many types of blackness so like um, you won't yeah. have hip hop culture without Jamaicans because DJ Cool Herc brought hip hop, like he brought the whole like Jamaican DJ culture to America. However, like New York African American culture is what hip hop culture grew out of. And that's right. what people identify hip hop culture with. But hip hop culture, uh, the aesthetics of hip hop culture are limited to the people there. And everybody that grew it outside of it is good. 
And also, like, getting into those circles isn't difficult. So, like, if you really want authentic hip-hop culture, you go to New York and you go to the underground and you got it for the rest of your time. And it's been that way for 50, 60 years since people have lived in New York. And there's always been that balance of, like, uh, African-Americans and West Indians and Latin Americans that have been there since, since the beginning. So, like, those dynamics are exactly the same. Where people have a problem is where there is no billion dollar sustainable black company that like all the black people can go to to get their bread off or like there is no like black bank that all the people like go to or, and there's no language that all the black people speak because we're not unified we can't unify because there's too many of us there's no singular culture that we identify with so we identify with aspects of different african cultures and we always see that uh in the in the absence of many deserving quote-unquote black people that should have certain opportunities. We always see how like white people seem to be able to skip the line or that there is colorism at play or whatever. And while that is accurate, it's important for us to remember that we have to be grateful for what we have. And in order to grow what we have, we have to hold ourselves as the standard instead of other people. A lot of people have been trained one way or another to view whiteness as the standard. And that's often why they're unsatisfied with what occurs um, inside of, inside of uh, black cultures or with black media. I've, I've said those words. I've said those words quite a few times. I say those four words quite often. I said that I wouldn't say the standard, but white is the default, even though mm -hmm. that whiteness that we see, especially in America, is built off the backs of black and brown people. Like yep. ev everything that like cowboys, that's built off black people. Black people were the first cowboys. And like they 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 roam like the West and did cattle, did all those things. Like they came up with a term cowboy. Uh Betty Betty Booth, like was a black woman, like uh, most most like the most popular singers of that time. Most of the aesthetics were created by black people, like uh, a lot a lot of the crash and a lot of like the uprising of the stock market was done by black people, by like those black people who would shine shoes, those uh, valets, those door openers, like they they would get the inside scoop from white people who knew about X Y and Z put their money into that and made the stock market go up and go down. Like uh, all, all the things that we can think about when it comes to like the American white culture, the American white standard is usually created or perpetuated by black and brown people or like, you know, Asian or Latinx or like, you know, as we go on through Pride Month right now, like the, the term LGBTQ was created by a black woman, like a black trans woman. So like it, it may be like the, the white standard default, but like it has like the layers of black and brownness all over it. Agreed. And that's why it's so important for those that profess to care to understand their history. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to do what you just did by invoking history and bulletproofing their statements within that history. And I, I don't argue with people about history that I know is certain. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's one thing I do. I don't, like, if I know something is certain, someone was arguing about, like, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> No, have, a, have a good day. I'm done having this conversation with you. Like, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's my whole thing. And much like yourself, I taught myself how to fight as well. So, like, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm self-taught in my fighting. I had no, no sensei, no master, like, no mentor teach me how to do X, Y, and Z when it comes to combat. Like, I, I taught myself every move that I know. And, like, uh, for years, shadow boxing was, was my go-to. Like, fighting my shadow was, like, my main way of combating myself and since i've been able to do that i either haven't gotten into a fight or i've been victorious in every fight i've had ever since so like i, I don't really <clears throat> i don't really like you know i carry myself well i know how to carry my weight i know how to throw my weight and like if someone wants to go at it i got i got these mittens for a reason it looks, that's a good thing indeed it looks like comfy cozy said something uh, my mom did a dna test it was good to it was good to know but at my age i didn't see myself taking on any of the culture to cultural traditions it was like over 15 culture lines i appreciated them though as i'm learning about them so it seems like like she understands like she got different lineages and different cultures inside of her dna but uh like whether she accepts it or not uh that that's remained to be seen but she still appreciates like where she comes from and i think even if i didn't know i'm not sure if it, if it would change who I am, to be honest with you. That's good. I think that's the best way to think about things because it's, it's a, the, a, identity is a beautiful thing and you can choose, ultimately you get to choose 
how you identify and how you express yourself in the world. Exactly. Yeah. Much like much like gender, like you know, it's it's yours to play with. Mm-hmm. I hear you, man. Absolutely. Yeah, you are the author of your existence, and that's why I enjoy being able to have so much access to all of the information ever with the internet because I can tell me about it. Yeah, you just get you can do anything with that information. It's like a playground. Bro, I, I envy I envy your generation like so much. Like I, I know I'm taking advantage of it now myself. But like to to grow up with like with your stamina and endurance, to have like uh, your your perseverance and like you know that that the youth that the the, the Gen Z the Zoomers have, like you guys are like the precipice of the future, and it can be whatever you guys want it to be, and like you guys are definitely writing that book, like as as we see it, like at TikTok, all the other social medias, uh, look on the news, like it's it's the youth changing things like putting their voice out there making themselves be heard like you know we want change we want x y and z we're tired of settling for the old status quo and like you know it's because of the information it's because of the news like and if you guys follow the news if you follow like, like the former president he wanted to get rid of tiktok he says it because like because of china owned it but it's, it's because he didn't want to use getting information for free that most people go to college to pay for yeah, it's a tricky beast indeed. I'm waiting to figure out how the sustainability works with those that are successful in using the, the openness of information to like get access to funds. Because right now, I'm in like a really tricky space where although I am my age, I can't really operate with that many people that are my age because like, they're not sustainable so they have like numbers and they have relationships and stuff and even if they have access to funding that funding doesn't come from them or from systems that they own and those that do understand the systems don't have that funding so like i end up doing stuff with like a lot of people that are older than me because those people are sustainable and the young people that are sustainable recognize that they have to do a lot of stupidness in order to maintain their relevance or maintain their funding. And so there's not many people that are like sustainable and smart that I have found that I can operate with at this present juncture. But I'm looking for them and those that are becoming sustainable, I continue like talking to them. Cause like I tried to invest in seven TikTokers all with hundreds of thousands of followers. And every time I lost a gratuitous (laughs) amount of funds. Doesn't mean anything, yeah. It took me me a while to understand something like that. The amount of followers you have does not mean that the, the amount of stability you may have, like whether it's in the social media or your personal life. Like, the, like the, those things do not equate to one another. So <laughs> I get that. <laughs> it's because, like, I got so used to, like, I had a system when I'm selling the clothes and stuff. I had a system. It was like I'd sell a certain amount of clothes. I would pay for an influencer shout out. And then I'd get that, that influencer shout out, use that content, run these Facebook ads and be straight. And that was in all of last year. It was just running Facebook ads and paying influencers to do stuff and then having that. And I was working very well with Instagram people. So when TikTok came out, I was like, oh, person got a million followers. How much money you work? What you want? And I gave him. It was crazy. I only gave homie a hundred bucks. And so I gave homie a hundred bucks and he made the post and they put my ad inside of somebody else's ad. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what? Well, I didn't work out for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's too little, too late now. No, I feel that. <laughs> oh, it was tragic. And I think I got one sale off of it. I was like, dang, we are never doing this again. So, of course, I did it three more times. And after that, I was like, yeah, this uh, TikTok is not working. But this... for spreading information, it's great. Depending on who you use, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like it sounds like that that tomfoolery you were talking about before. Like you gotta go through a lot of trial and error before you can figure out what works for you. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I'm finding that's the case with, and that's what that's what makes it tricky. Is like you 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 learn that through trial and error is how you learn <laughs> to take less risk so that you don't have get it get as bit as many times. But then when people don't know you or you're not like introduced to people Mm -hmm. now you have to pitch yourself and explain why people should take a chance on you and then Mm -hmm. it becomes this very tricky game of 
you constantly pitching yourself to people that can provide you with access to the things that you need while simultaneously having to evaluate other people's value and not understand why relationships are so important because having the relationship skips the game of finding value because you have a reference of how much value someone can have to you based on the value they provide to people in your network. Hard fucking facts right there, man. Like, uh, I would tell myself that that this is that this is like all like the underbelly of capitalism, but like you know, I I much like yourself have done research and realized like this is just business. Mm. This is just, this is just like the cornerstone of business. This isn't really like you know the hallmarks of capitalism at all. This is just how business is done. Like if even if capitalism wasn't around anymore, like we would still have to like to be able to put ourselves out there if we needed to be funded by someone by X, Y, and Z to be like like to show our divinity for who we are. We gotta be like to, to make sure that we're we're coherent with what's going on and like we can still show up to put out the product so like you know that's just that's just business and like sometimes uh <laughs> sometimes it's not easy to keep on doing that <laughs> that's a fact but the beautiful thing is is that just like everything there's patterns in it and it's a yeah. game and once you understand that game you can use it in interesting ways so for example <laughs> there's an app called vero and Vero was supposed to take, I know, I know. That's where, ah! I'm, going. That's where I'm going with it. So there's an app called Vero. And a couple of years ago, all the artists were like, we're tired of Instagram treating us jacked up. So we're all going to move to Vero. And all the artists tried to move to Vero. And then the artists were like, hold up. Yo, you don't have no followers on Vero. How do you have a social media app with no followers? And so all the artists came back over to Instagram. It was like four years ago. So... Meanwhile, Vero is like a uh, it's, it's a it's a social media company that's been backed by venture capitalism, like a whole bunch of other social media companies yeah. are. So understanding the game of how venture capital works and basically you get free money to work on your project in the event that eventually pumping money into your project produces results. Mm -hmm. Then like because of that, this, that social media company needs content and they have venture capital to actually pay the people that are making that content in ways that Instagram would not. And they give opportunities in ways that Instagram would not. Because unlike Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, they actually need people, which means yeah. it's content creators going to platforms like Vero and Fanbase and providing value to them puts you on in a space where you get to say that you work with the social media platform. And then number two, in the event that it blows up, you're an early adopter of it. So hypothetically speaking, if certain people were to work with certain social media platforms <laughs> and be featured on certain social media platforms, that would put them in a very cool position in the, the most, future. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, is, which is why I, I'm not going to remove my banner that I wore from Vero from my page anytime soon. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> You under, you understand completely. Yeah. That's the long game. We are supposed to play the long game. That's yeah, how you man. win. That's how that's how you win exactly. Like uh, and they they are they are very generous to me. Let's put it that way. They are very generous. They are patient. They uh they work with me. Uh, I may I may have to take certain pause from Vero Air once in a while, but you know what? I'm still there. I'm still doing my thing. I still put out content on Vero. Uh, my Vero base loves what I do. And I had to forsake fan base. Fan base is just it's too wonky. Like I can't, I can't, I can't even get verified if I got a hundred thousand followers on TikTok. Like I'm not doing that. Like I'm good. Like I don't think fan base is gonna stick around much longer. But that's me talking. So, but uh, and like I know, like fan base is black owned. I know, like he like the, the son of Isaac Hayes. I got all of that. It's just I tried it out for a while. He's he's a little bit toxic in my eyes anyway. But uh, yeah, man, like. Uh, Fan base is cool, but like it's not for me. But uh, I'm a Vero guy right now, and I'm I'm cool with that. I'm hardcore cool good. with that. Yeah, it's working out. It's very good, and it's good to know <laughs> what works for you. A lot yeah. of people don't take the time to know what works with them until they get jacked up, and then they're like, "No, how are we going to get out of this?" I'm going to quit this. Yeah, yeah, like, I got noticed that too. And I don't want to be that guy. Like I like doing this. I like I like being on social media, talking for an hour with people that uh that I've met maybe once or twice about you know what they're doing and their projects and just you know shooting the breeze, man. Like uh you you know like I've been doing podcasts for over two years and like uh, you heard some of them I'm sure, but uh 
like having com- conversations like this, I feel like, you know, like a Q and A is, it's nice. And being a part of like, you know, I feel like, like the border community has different subsets and I'm in one of those subsets of that community. And I know that like, I may have propelled a few people to keep on doing what they're doing, whether I work with those people still or not, like uh, they, they got inspiration from me and they're still going forward because of like what I've been doing. And like, you know what? Like if I'm like in a, in a smaller subset of the board community, like I'll take those reins and I'll keep on running with it. And it's always a fun time talking to other people like myself, more like-minded people like myself who uh, just want to have fun doing what they're doing. Like that's, that's, never, that's never a dull moment. I am on Tumblr. I am on Tumblr. And I, I used to like Tumblr until they got rid of all the nudity. I'm not going to, I'm just going to say it as is. Yeah. <laughs> Tumblr <laughs> used to be fun. Now we on to uh we on to Reddit now. Reddit that, is home. That's where that's for all like you know the the expletive expletive stuff is right now. It's on, on Reddit. Reddit Reddit has a lot. Of, <laughs> much like Tumblr, Reddit has a lot of reading. But uh, if you know how to navigate on Reddit, you will have yourself one ball of the time, man. Yeah. Hey, you can find anything on Reddit. It is the bastion of information. <laughs> Agreed. Agree. Uh, like <laughs> you can just type in like like how to do X, Y, and Z. It will give you like the entire rundown. You want to get into Bitcoin? They got tons of forms because you want to do Bitcoin. Oh yeah. Yeah. Reddit is a beautiful place. I enjoy it greatly. <laughs> it has taught me much about the lascivious and less lascivious sides of the world. Tell me about it, dude. Like I, I think <laughs> I think I think Google helped me out with that aspect. But you know, you're going to take Google with a grain of salt. But uh, Reddit is definitely like a good place to go. Indeed. Uh, I think that's all the time that I have. I gotta go monitor my kids. I think uh, my youngest is passed out in the bed. I gotta wake her up. It's, it's like one o'clock in the afternoon. She's awake. I gotta take myself a nap. Gotta <laughs> work tonight. Always busy. Blessings, bro. Thank you for inspiring us to have this conversation. It's always nice to talk with you. Like we, I know we met once at uh, at a punk black show. I think it was. Yes. Yeah. That was a cool time. I got to meet Urban Sama for the first time there. Like I've, I've been, me and Urban Sama have been like this ever since, man. Like we, we've been the best buds. That's beautiful. I'm always. It's always good when the people can connect and build and create cool yeah. things with each other. If you guys haven't followed Urban Sama yet, make sure you do. He's almost to a thousand followers. I'm not hey. sure how much how much followers mean to most of you, but you know, followers is like it's people who care about what you do. So. Like for me, it means a good good deal of amount. And if you guys want to go out and support them, make sure you go do so. So this is uh this is like we gotta we gotta link up again, man. Like I know like you you got people who make sure I knew shirt and like you know, I got a pretty decent platform of people who follow my stuff and like, you know, I can wash your hands if you can wash my hands, metaphorically speaking, of course. <laughs> the things can definitely be done. Just DM me whenever you're ready. I'm probably going to be back in Georgia in like the fall. Actually, it's weird. I have a I have a a home that I can stay at in Georgia now. So whenever I'm not traveling or like have to be in Philly, that is home base. Philly's home base. Uh, yeah, Philly's home base, and then Georgia is second home base. Oh, jeez. Well, I, I'm I'm sorry about the tragedy that just happened in Philadelphia. Like, uh, I hope you're doing all right. You and your loved ones are safe out there. It seems like you know the the mass shooting that just happened. But uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, thanks for letting me watch you draw and and put lines on the paper this entire <laughs> time. Just <laughs> you seem like you seem like you're enjoying yourself. So you know. Is that I appreciate you like you let me take take tribute to watching you doing this. Like I, I, I do and I, I will probably I'm gonna post this on my page, I'm gonna probably rip it, and I'm gonna put it on uh my podcast if, if you're okay with that. I definitely am. Thanks right. for being willing to pull up, bro. Cause like this is the second time I interviewed you essentially, right? Indeed. Shit. Knocking out that content. <laughs> <laughs> you know we've known each other for like what, like almost three years now? Yeah. Damn. Time flies. Doesn't it? And like yeah. you're you're what? You're like what, twenty one? I am twenty one. Jeez, dude. It's my favorite age thus far because I have <laughs> all of the freedom but mm-hmm. none of the liability. Like I don't have to go to school. 
I don't have to like go to work as long as I keep posting things to Instagram. So it's a cool <laughs> <laughs> screw now. I we're think gonna, when, I, when I have them, a girl in life, things are going to get a bit more complicated. We're going to take our time in that regard. <laughs> oh, is, 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 is something pending right now? Uh, it's something that I'm I'm weighing the pros and cons of having a girlfriend right Look now. Look at this dude, right on. We'll man. see what happens in time. Well, take, take your time. Make sure you're happy. That's all that matters. Oh, indeed. Well, as always, I'm D. And uh, Rowan, how, how do you prefer to be addressed? I mean, depends on the Instagram page. <laughs> I have no preference. <laughs> You got like 30 of them, so yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, Lee is always cool, but if you want to go by Instagram page, feel free. I assume yeah. it would, I think it would be cool to have like, like split and be able to like just shift complete, like Moon Knight, just switch completely between personalities at will. But that ability has not yet been unlocked. I, I, I don't think that's the best character like, to be written from when it comes to different personalities. But you know what? <laughs> if that makes you happy, by, by all means. <laughs> by all means. <laughs> this is cool, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for, uh, for suggesting this because uh, I, I was apprehensive about going live and like, talking and whatnot because uh, it almost feels like a therapy session with other people. So like, I appreciate you hitting me up wanting to chat and just like, you know, talking about nothing, man. I appreciate, well, you know, talk, talking about something that doesn't have like any major consequence attached to it. So like, I, there I is no it. format. We save getting canceled for the late night live. See, look at this dude. Look at this guy. Always thinking, aren't you? I like it. <laughs> Peace, bro. Thank you. Thank you, man. Hey guys, D here of FTL Nerd Talk. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, tell your friends about FTL Nerd Talk. Got a lot of different shows for all of you. Make sure you tune in every week for a brand new episode. Take it easy.